Hey everyone, my name is Andrew and I'm from the Graph the Developer Experiences team. So today I just wanted to talk a bit about the Graph.NET v5 SDK that uh, we are working on right now. And we're just hoping to address some of the few the changes that we're making and enhancements uh, to enrich the user experiences. That's going to help us uh, make it a better experience for everyone. So the new version of the SDK is generated with a, a new tool called Kyoto. Uh, so we've been working together with the team for the past few months to get this one uh, up and running. And we have a few enhancements that uh, have been coming in that uh, enable us to make and do things that we couldn't really do before. Among them, which I will talk a bit about more later, is like the backing store and calling various endpoints like the audit cast and the audit account and the use of uh, parameter objects. So the first thing I wanted to talk about really is like the change of uh, the developer experience. And at the top of the slide, uh, I can see uh, what you would currently do to make a call with the v4 and the bottom with the uh, the new preview version of uh, v5. And you notice like a couple of things, and uh, one of them is like that there is no longer the request function in the in the whole Fluent API uh, method calls to make the the use of the SDK a bit more succinct, uh, as well as now the configuration of the request is done with like a lambda uh, that is passed over to the get or post or uh, patch async method. And this really, uh, with the help of accurate uh, descriptions that we're getting from the various API owners, uh, enables us to have like a rich experience with regards to the intelligence. Because now, like, for example, like the count there now is like a strongly typed parameter, like it's a Boolean, or the select is like a collection of strings. Vis a vis, there you need to figure out like. Uh, whether how the string needs to be formatted and uh, correct, and that would result in like various user errors uh, when making uh, calls to the graph. So the next thing I also wanted to talk about was uh, the backing store, and really the backing store is it enables like dirty tracking of the changes uh, in various objects. And like you notice, like with version four of the SDK, like in a scenario where you're trying to like disable the recurrence uh, of a of an event, uh, let's say you fetch the event, and then you try and set the recurrence property to null, and then send it back. What you notice is that that really won't work because uh, the serializer won't really send out uh, null values. But now with V5, we have this backing store that keeps track of changes that's happening to the object uh, when it comes back. And therefore, you should just be able to uh, set the property to null and send it back, and that will uh, sort out your issue. And since now we are also keeping track uh, of the object, we only send the properties that change rather than the entire object as well. So that will result in like a smaller payload being sent out, better efficiency, and we should probably notice better performance uh, in whatever scenarios that you are working with. I also wanted to talk about is now the use of uh, parameter objects. So like in a given scenario where you are trying to maybe call the send mail API. Currently in version four, these uh, parameters of the data function are literally function uh, parameters of the send mail function. So what now, what we've done is we've moved over to using a request body, which is basically like a nested, uh, is an object that nests these properties inside. So like, in this scenario, we have like a send mail post uh, request body, and therefore the message and the save to send items parameters will be properties inside uh, this object. And therefore, with this, you just pass the object over to the post method. And in the event, like when the API endpoint has changed or the API evolves to maybe introduce like new parameters to the to the API, this doesn't result in like 
clients having breaking changes or running into issues because the send mail function has added uh, new parameters and therefore this results to like better user experience for everyone and a cleaner uh, solution uh, for everyone that's trying to use the SDK. Finally, I just was hoping to talk about like a couple of uh, scenarios that uh, weren't really supported uh, in the current version uh, for the SDK. And the first one really was uh, calling like the dollar count endpoints or dollar count segments or data. So this is a scenario like whereby you're trying to like get the number of users in your tenant or something. So uh, you just want to get that as an integer and get it back into your app to figure out what you want to do next. Uh, so you can't really do this. You really have to uh, probably build the URL yourself and make your own native HTTP request. But now with the use of Kyoto and using the generated uh, SDK, you can just use this single line of code to configure request, get the count, and get that uh, to use it. Then the next scenario is the support for the Odata cast segment. So this is where now you want like API side filtering, especially for APIs that give like a collection of different types of object. So let's say you want to get uh, members of the group and the members of the group could be users or applications or any other type. So uh, with the new version five that we're working on in preview, you can just add the extra segment like to get like members that are users and this will eliminate the need for you to do like client side filtering and add all that logic that would make uh, life uh, a bit harder for you. So you can just follow the link. There are a lot of other changes that uh, we are working on. So the link will lead you to detailed changes of things that are going on. The new version It's in preview. We are looking for feedback from everyone. So please uh, give us feedback on GitHub and let us know what we can do to make it better. Uh, with the current version, uh, we are going to continue supporting it with metadata updates weekly as we continually do. That's it for me. I'll hand it over back to Brian. Thank you so much, Andrew. Great to hear about the updates coming for the .NET SDK for this.